Want to speak real English from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at EnglishClass101.com. I said a bad word on camera. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Ask Alicia, the weekly series where you ask me questions and I answer them. Maybe. First question this week comes from Fan. Hi, Fan. Uh, Fan says, are no and none the same meaning? And do they have the same usage? No, they don't have the same usage. We can't use them the same way, but they have sort of similar meanings. We can use no as a simple negative response to something, and we can also use it before a noun to mean we have like zero of that thing. I have no time. He has no money. You have no friends. This means no zero of that thing. I have no time. I have no money. I have no friends, for example. I have a sad life. None, however, means not one or not any. None of my time is used wisely. None of his money went to charity. None of my friends want to hang out today. So we're using none to mean not any of or not one of some other noun phrase. So we can't use them quite the same. No. So I hope that that helps you out a little bit. Thanks for the question. Next question comes from Hannah from Vietnam. Hi Hannah. What is the difference between sounds and seams and how to use them correctly? Can I use sound for a person? For example, you sound not good. She sounds tired. Aha, nice question. So we tend to use uh, sound for things that we hear with our ears, like information we get with our ears. Something sounds good. So physically, like we hear a sound with our ears. If someone suggests an activity, we say sounds good because we heard that information with our ears. Or if someone suggests a bad idea, like, oh, that doesn't sound good. Or if you hear a friend like coughing or something, you can say, whoa, you don't sound good. So those are all examples of information we get with our ears. But seem, on the other hand, seem is used for information we gain, uh, but we cannot confirm like quickly. So it's used for like an initial impression of something. So if we can confirm our kind of idea of that thing, um, then it's kind of strange to use seem. So let me give you some examples of this. She seems nice. Your friend seems angry. That place seems dangerous. So in each of these examples, we can't really quickly confirm whether our initial impression is true or not. Like if I touched something like a, like a nice pillow and I said, oh, it seems soft, that would be weird because I can confirm like the pillow is soft. I don't know why my arm is a pillow, but like I can confirm that right now. So it sounds weird. <laughs> it sounds weird to use seams there. So if you can confirm something quickly uh, or if you can understand that quickly, it's sort of strange to use seams. Sounds is used for information we get with our ears. So I hope that that helps you. Sounds good. Sounds good to me. Sounds good to me. Sounds good to me. Next question also sounds good to me. Okay. Next question comes from Iman. Hi again, Iman. Which one is correct? She has gained admission to the club or she has gained admission in the club? Um, in terms of the preposition you're using, to is correct. She has gained admission to the club. Admission to the club. If, however, this is an example sentence about going to a music venue, um, we don't use gained admission. Gained admission sounds very, very formal. So if you're talking about a formal club or like a formal society, like she has gained admission to the club, fine, that's fine. If, however, you're just talking about like going out to a party, we'll use she got into the club or she has gotten into the club. So we say got into or get into a club. Like it sounds like it was difficult to get in. This is how I go into clubs. <laughs> um, sounds like it was difficult to get in, but she was able to gain admission. So gain admission sounds too formal. So we use got into instead. So I don't know if that's the situation here, but just in case there's an expression you can use as well to get into something. Next. Question. Next question comes from Muhammad El Hill. Hi, Muhammad. What is the difference between up and above, down and below? Okay. Depending on the sentence, the words can have different grammatical functions, but I assume this is a question about positioning words. So, a uh, base difference, I suppose, would be that up and down refer to movement. There's actual movement happening. Up meaning things go this direction, down meaning things go this direction. So there's movement up or movement down when you use the word up or down. Let's walk up the street. She scrolled down on the page. She put her hand up. He put his hand down. So all of these refer to movement. There's some movement happening up or down. 
Above and below, however, refer to fixed positions. There's no movement. And we need to use a direct object when we use above and below. So when I say uh, A is above B, there's an A and B in that situation. I can't use above if I don't have an A and a B. There's like a relative positioning there that's happening and there's no movement happening either. So examples, I put a shelf above the TV, hide his keys below the sink. My name is above your name. Our sales were below the target amount this month. So in each of these example sentences, there's no movement happening. It's a simple position. So uh, in some cases, like in the first three examples, the position is like a physical object. In the last example sentence, however, about sales, it's a concept. So sales were below the target amount this month, but the position is still fixed. So there was a target amount and sales, sales were below that target amount. So um, you can use this for concepts or for physical objects. So keep that in mind, up and down, movement, above and below, no movement, fixed positions. Hope that helps. Thanks for the great question. Next question. Next question comes from Eugene, Eugen, Eugene. You don't have an E at the end, Eugene, Eugen. I don't know. Hi, sorry. Hi, Alicia. What is the difference between need, have and should. For example, what do I need to, what do I have to, what should I do? Which sentence is correct? Thanks. Um, actually, all of these sentences are correct. It just depends on what you want to say. Grammatically, all of these are fine, um, but the nuance and the meaning changes. Let's look at a simple example. I have to go to the bank. I need to go to the bank. I should go to the bank. All right. First one, I have to go to the bank. It sounds like you have a responsibility to do that task and there's maybe some reason you don't want to do that task. So you sound kind of like, uh, I don't want to do this thing, this is boring, or this is something I don't want to do with my time. But I have a responsibility to do that thing. I have to go to the bank. The second example sentence, I need to go to the bank, sounds like, yes, you have a responsibility to do that task. That task is still your responsibility. But that feeling of, oh, I don't want to do this is not anywhere near as strong. If you say, I have to go to the bank, it's like a stronger feeling of something you don't want to do. Maybe if you say, I need to go to the bank, you still don't want to do that, but you're not really communicating such a strong feeling of, I don't want to do this. That feeling is much, much uh, more diminished. It's not as strong here. So I need to go to the bank is pretty neutral, uh, just a responsibility phrase. The last one, I should go to the bank, means I don't have a responsibility to do this task right now, but it's probably a good idea if I do it. I should go to the bank. So this one's good for things you're maybe thinking about, you're not responsible for, but maybe they're good ideas. So like I should clean my house or I should do the dishes or I should do my homework, for example. I should is for things that are good ideas, but maybe you don't have a responsibility necessarily. Have to sounds more like, no, I don't want to do this. Need is pretty neutral for a responsibility. In my case, that's how I use these words anyway. So I hope that that helps you. They're all correct. Next question is from Alexandre. Hi, Alexandre. Hi, Alicia. What does sick grind mean? What does sick grind mean? Sick, this is a skateboarding term, actually. So I'm not a skateboarder, but a grind is like when a skateboarder is doing a trick and the skateboards, so imagine this is the skateboard, they jump onto some obstacle and the side of the skateboard does this motion, which we call grinding. So it grinds against some obstacle. So that trick is called a grind. Sick, however, is slang for cool, great, awesome, nice, good. So sick grind means that was a nice grind. That was a cool trick, well done. So it's a compliment. Very casual, used probably among skateboarders and other people who do similar tricks, I don't know. By the way, you can replace grind with anything you want uh, to make a very casual compliment, like sick dinner, man, I don't know, <laughs> like something that sounds kind of young and casual and cool, we can use the word sick to describe it. That was sick, that was sick. I don't use sick because I'm not cool, but if you want to, you can use the word sick. Sick burn or like sick ride, I don't even know. So sick sounds kind of cool, young, whatever, but sick grind is a skateboarding term. Skateboarding and maybe other similar sports, so hope that helps you. I'm not a cool person. I can't give you cool examples, but there you go. Next question, hopefully not a skateboarding question, comes from Muhammad al Daily. Hi, Muhammad. Hi, Alicia. What's the difference in pronunciation between very and very? Uh -huh. Very and very have no difference in pronunciation. Very exciting, isn't it? 
that's it. All right, that's it for questions that I want to look at this week. Thank you so much for sending so many great questions. Like there are so many now, I cannot possibly answer them all in one week. Uh, but keep sending. Uh, I love reading them. And make sure if you haven't sent one yet that you send one to me at EnglishClass101.com slash ask hyphen Alicia. Of course, if you like this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and come check us out at EnglishClass101.com for other good English study tools. Thanks very much for watching this episode of Ask Alicia, and I will see you again next week. Bye-bye. Sick video. <laughs>